Beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saying, be patient, can be destructive. In the mouths of those in power, be patient is a way to maintain the status quo, to keep quiet those who are powerless or oppressed. Be patient has been used for centuries to thwart progress, end reformation, divert attention from what harms or oppresses or destroys. So be careful with Paul today, who tells his Roman Christians that we wait with patience for God's healing of the whole creation. If we urge, be patient while God brings wholeness and life to this bitterly divided and dying world, we could actually perpetuate the evil. But the word patience itself has within it a clarity that helps us to be faithful. In the languages of the West, patience has an important part. As far back as we can see, through Greek and Latin and the Germanic and Romantic languages which evolved into the English language we share, whichever word is used for patience is created from the root word for suffering. To be patient, our language says, is to suffer. We see this in another usage. The person suffering in the hospital is called the patient. You can't understand patience without remembering that for thousands of years, the people whose language we now speak as our own didn't understand patience apart from suffering. So, when Paul says, if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience, he means, in his own Greek and in our modern English and in all the languages in between, he means we wait with suffering. Being patient doesn't mean accepting the status quo or quashing reform or blindly pretending that just waiting will fix things. Being patient means we will suffer while we wait while we work, while we hope. This shines a different light on Jesus' parable today. Jesus says that good seed has been planted, but that an enemy has also sown evil seed alongside it. And we are going to have to live with both good and evil growing together until the harvest is sorted out. This can give hope. We're the ones in the parable saying, didn't you make a good world, plant good seed, and are reassured by God, yes, I made a good world, but an enemy has brought wickedness and evil into it, so don't be surprised or dismayed. I'll take care of this. But it's discouraging, too. We sense the urgency in this parable, the desire to root out all the evil right now. We don't like to suffer or to see others suffer. And God's plan of letting evil and good grow along side by side without always intervening will lead to much suffering, has led to it. Just listen to the news or walk seven blocks south or one block north of Mount Olive. And the whole creation knows this, Paul says, suffers this. Paul doesn't limit salvation to humanity or a percentage of of humanity. For Paul, God's healing is a comprehensive healing of all things, all people, all creatures, nature itself. So the whole creation groans for God's healing. This parable tells us we're not imagining that evil has been spread throughout God's good creation. Paul tells us we're not the only ones who see it either. All people, animals, trees, rocks, Stars, waters, groan. All wait patiently, that is, wait with suffering. And what sign will tell the creation God's healing has begun? Paul says, the creation waits for the revealing of the children of God. Those who are revealed as being filled with God's spirit. Now, consider the psalmist's prayer from today. Look well within me to see if any wickedness be in me, O God, and lead me in the way that is everlasting. 
And look at the parable again, keeping Paul's words in mind. Jesus might not mean simplistically that the weeds are evil people and the wheat are righteous people. The psalmist and Paul suggest that each of us has God's good seed growing up inside us alongside evil seed the enemy planted. It is God's weeding out of the evil in our hearts that reveals us as children of God. And as more and more are revealed, the world will begin to heal. This country, our city, can begin to heal right now. Because we don't have to wait until the end of time for the harvest. We know lots of plants that bloom and flower and bear fruit in all sorts of different seasons, not just in the fall. Surely Jesus means that of your heart. While things are growing up inside you, you might not be able to distinguish what is good and what is evil. So you should be careful at what you try to root out. But when something bears fruit, when you see what happens when that which is growing in you, living in you, comes to maturity, then you'll know. If it harms anyone or anything, it's a weed. And now that fruit is obvious, you can ask God to remove it from your heart and burn it away. If it is blessing and grace, you can praise God for this harvest in your life. But patiently waiting for this is, as those before us have taught us, suffering. Suffering as we feel the pain of God burning away our weeds, suffering in the world around us as evil is allowed to thrive alongside good for a time. The path of being revealed as a child of God for the healing of the world is always a path that includes suffering for and with each other and the creation. But our God is also a patient God. A suffering God. It cost Jesus his life to be God with us, to call us to be children of God, good wheat bearing seed in a world where evil thrives alongside the good. Next week, Paul will tell us that the Holy Spirit speaks on our behalf with sighs too deep for words, suffering, groaning on behalf of God's children, God's creation. But remember, this suffering patience, God's and our own, is labor pains, not death pains, Paul says. In spite of what we see in the world and in our own hearts, God's suffering goodness and grace and love, willing to face and break death on behalf of all things, is now bearing life in this world. That's our hope in the midst of the worlds and our groaning, the triune God is already giving birth to a new creation. And as you are revealed more and more as God's child, you are born along with that new creation for the healing of all. In the name of Jesus, amen.